Up next in our learning, I want to start talking about sending emails, another important task that most websites need to do. We're going to start from the basics, and later on, when we start talking about events and jobs, we're going to be able to do this in a much faster way for the user. But for now, we're going to do it in line. In our project, we have this Contact Us page, and right now, we're not doing anything with it. My idea is to turn this page into a form that someone can fill out and send us an email from. Fairly simple and straightforward. Most websites actually do this. So let's tackle this real world example right now. So what is our first step? As we've learned before, we need a controller and then we're going to need some routes. Let's start with our controller. PHP artisan make controller contact form controller. All right. So we have our controller. Now the first thing I want to do is I want to refactor our web route to start using this controller. You see right now, all we are doing is showing a view. We're not actually fetching a controller. So let's rewrite this right now to use that controller. Route get contact and we're going to be using the contact form controller at create. So why are we using the method create? Well, you got to remember that create is what displays the form. So in continuing with RESTful controllers, we got to find the appropriate verb for our current action. We can think of a contact form as the create method, similarly to our customers and new customer, right? This is our create method. So of course, our contact, even though we're not going to call it contact slash create, it goes to our create, right? And that's what makes sense. It's a form. It's being displayed. It wants to create a record in our database and send us an email, of course. So we need to call it the create method. So there it is. So we're using the create method. This is a little bit tricky. I got to admit at first it's difficult to find the correct verb for each of the actions. And a lot of times what you will find is that you're not using enough controllers. As you get more and more experience, you'll actually find yourself using tons of controllers and sometimes your controls will only have two or three methods in them and each method will only have one or two lines of code. But that's the beauty of controllers. They're free. You can make as many of them as you want. And as long as they're named appropriately, it's very easy to have many controllers. So with that being said, let's get rid of our old contact. So we need to go to this create method now, my contact form controller, and let's create that method now public function create and for now we're just going to return a view and we're going to have to move our view right now let's go into resources views right now our contact page is just called contact.blade.php but we know we're going to have to move that into its own contact directory or you can even call it contact form if you wanted to and then inside there we'll have a create view in my case, I'm just going to say contact create, and I think that'll make sense. So let me go ahead and create that directory now, new directory, contact, and let's move our contact form into contact and let's rename it, refactor, rename, create. Okay. Let's go into the create and let's actually just check it out in the browser first. We're still all set with that. All right, so I'm going to borrow some logic from our previous form that we've been working on just because I have this nice and set up already. So I will bring that over. Let's put a form right here. We'll worry about the action in just a second. So we'll have a name, an email, and we need a message as typical forms will be. So this would be a label for message. We'll say message and it's not going to be an input. This will be a text area name of message and let's give it a class of form control. All right. If you have any errors for message. So the last thing I do want to do is of course, if validation were to fail, we do want to put our old data back in. So old message. Now we have worked in this section here before, but we're actually not going to need any of that. So we can simplify everything to just look like so reformat. All right, so our form is looking good. We have three fields, name, email, and message. Let's check it out on the browser, see what we have. Refresh, and there we are. Okay, so we have our name, our email, and our message. Everything's looking good. 
All right, let's add our final step. Of course, we need a button. All right, so button of type submit, and let's add some classes here. BTN and BTN, maybe primary. And then we'll say send message. All right, let's see. There it is, so we have our contact form. Okay, so let's talk about our form action. Where is this gonna be posting to? If you remember in our previous lesson, our create method actually posts to just the base contact, but using post. So let me create that route right now. So we're gonna post to contact, and that is gonna hit our store method. Contact form is create method, and then it posts to our store method. Remember, typically this will have a create attached to it, but because we're dealing with just a simple contact form, we're not gonna do that to the URL. So we'll keep it like that and that's okay. So we're gonna be posting to slash contact with a method of post. And one last little bit is of course we need our CSRF field. So CSRF and that's it. That way Laravel won't fail. So this will post and this will come to our controller and this will be calling the store method. So we'll have the store. And for now, I'm just gonna die and dump the request just to show you that all of our data is there. So request all is what we would use. Let's see if we can make it work. Refresh, new customer, new email, our message. Okay, send message, and there we are. So we have our name, our email, and our message. Great. So what's the next step? Of course, validation. Let's validate this request. So we'll say data is equal to request validate. And we have three fields. So we have our name. Of course, your name is required. Then we have our email, which is required. And it needs to be an email. Oops, email. There we go. And then we have our message, which is just simply required. All right, so our message and that. All right, so then if we get to this step, then of course, this is where we need to send an email. And we'll get to that in just a second. Let me just confirm validation is working. Let me head back, I'm gonna hit refresh, and I'm just gonna hit the form. And sure enough, the name field is required, the email field is required, and the message field is required. Okay, so let's talk about sending an email. Laravel ships with something called mailables. And think of a mailable as a template that's ready for you to start sending nicely formatted emails right out of the box. We could start by sending emails the very plain way where we're actually doing everything by hand, but I just don't find the value in that when most of the time you're really gonna use the mailable. In a more advanced topic, we can talk about how to create your own mail and what the benefits of doing that would be. But for most cases, mailables are perfectly fine and you won't have to reinvent the wheel from scratch, which is why you're using Laravel to begin with, right? You want everything to be simple. So let's head back over to our terminal and let's run PHP artisan and let's find the command. So of course, this will be a make command because we're making something and we have that right here, make mail it creates a new email class. Let's run PHP artisan help make mail. And let's see what kind of options we need. At the very least, we need a name, but there are some options. And specifically, there's this markdown option. It creates a new markdown template for the mailable. Now these markdown mailables was something that was introduced a little while back in Laravel. And ever since, it has been extremely easy to create very good looking emails right out of the box. So let's run the command again, and we'll say PHP artisan make mail. What are we gonna call our mail? Well, it makes sense to call it contact form mail. And then we'll pass in that markdown flag. This markdown section will actually create a view for our mail. And that's the way that mailables work with Markdown. It creates a view and you can actually take a look at the view in your browser and preview your email. It's really, really convenient. But it creates a view inside your views directory. But this view is not used for your browser, of course, as every other view in there. So what I like to do is nest them inside its own email folder. 
That way the email folder will contain all of my mail views inside and I know as long as it's inside that directory, I don't have to worry about them. So I use the following convention. Emails. After emails, I use the exact same convention as we've been using before. So my next step will be contact. So that way it follows the same convention but inside the emails subdirectory. So contact. And then what are we going to call this? Contact form. All right, let's give it a go. And let's go back to PHP Storm and see what we got. So we have again this new emails directory that we just created. And then we have contact, which matches the view for contact. And then inside of that, we have our contact form. And if we open our contact form, we get this pre made email. We'll take a look at that pre made email in just a second. But for now, let's ignore that. So how do we send this email? Now for testing purposes, there are services like MailTrap, which we're going to use today, which will basically show you an inbox and you could use it for testing. Once you deploy into a real server, you'll probably use something more like MailGun or something like that to actually send your emails. But for the purposes of development, MailTrap works amazingly. So we'll use that today. But let's start with the first step, the coding part of it. So how do we send an email? So we have this view here. But if you actually go up to app, you created a new folder called mail when you ran that command. So we have this contact form mail. And this is the one that actually calls that contact form. Notice that it looks a lot like how we call views, except that it's calling this markdown and then it's going into emails, contact, and then our contact form. So this is the class that kind of handles everything for us. You see it extends mailable. All right, let's get this email sent. Let's say mail and we're using illuminate support facades mail. And if we look up top, it imported it up here, right? So it's mail, but you have to add the use statement up here. Now, PHP Storm, of course, does this automatically, which is nice. So we're going to send a mail to, and what's the email we're going to send it to? Well, for now, I'm just going to send it to test at test.com, not a real email address. And we're going to send a new contact form mail. And that's it. Laravel is now able to send that email. It really is that simple. So let's go through the steps one more time. So we're sending a mail and this mail facade is being imported up here at the top. If you get an error like mail doesn't exist, the class, then that means that you did not import it at the top. So send me an email to, and then this is the email address that we're going to use for now. Send the new contact form mail and contact form mail also get imported up here as app mail contact form mail. So technically, if we ran this right now, it will send an email. However, we don't have any email set up. So we need to go to our EMV file, which is remember where we have all of our settings. And there's this section here for mail. And we have not really used it up until this point. So it actually comes pre set up for using mail trap. But the username password is empty. It's null, which means that we actually have to set this up. So what you will need to do is go to mailtrap.io and create an account in Mailtrap. I've already created an account. It's very simple to create, so I won't run through the steps of that. But once you have Mailtrap, again, this is for email testing. This is for development. You would never use this in production. But this will help you create emails and send them to yourself so you can see them right away. Once you're in here, and by the way, MailTrap is free. There are some premium services that you can pay for, but for the most part, the free version works perfectly fine. Once you're inside your dashboard, you will have this demo inbox. If you click in demo inbox, you will see your credentials down here. These are my credentials. You need to have your very own credentials. Otherwise, you wouldn't be sending emails to your MailTrap account. You'll be sending them to mine and then you'll never see them. So make sure that you get your own account and you create your own numbers. So username, we'll go ahead and copy this over, paste, and then let's take a look at the password, copy, and then paste. And that's it. Setup is done for MailTrap. You don't have to do anything else. Laravel kind of ships ready to go for MailTrap. Let's fill out our form and let's see if we can actually get an email sent to us. New customer, new email, testing mailables in Laravel. All right, let's see what happens. 
send message. Okay. We're not returning a view or a thank you message or anything like that. So that's why we're getting this white page. But if we visit MailTrap, there we are. Contact form mail. And we have sent ourselves our very first email through Laravel. Obviously, this view hasn't been modified. This is what it ships with. So let's go ahead and change that now. Remember, inside our views directory, we have our emails and then we have this contact form. So this is what actually got sent to us, right? Makes sense. We have this introduction, the body of your message. Thanks, Laravel. So introduction, body of message, and then we see thanks and then a config name app, which we have not set up and ships as Laravel. Great. So how do we get the form data to our mailable? So that's the next step. A lot like how you pass data to a view, you need to pass the data into our mailable. So let's go back to our controller, contact form controller, and we have this data, but we are not passing it to our mailable. So you pass it right here, data. That's where the data goes. So you're passing contact form mail and in the parentheses, we'll pass the data. So let's go to contact form mail and let's accept that data. So we'll say data up here. Let's initialize the fields. And here's the cool bit of this. We have this private data, but if we make this public, now that data object is actually available to our view. We can just simply call data and it will work. So let's do that now. Back in our blade, let's erase all of this for now. The only thing you really need is just this component mail message. That's all that you need. So let's say, thank you for your message. And in this file, this is markdown. So you could use a mixture of markdown or even HTML. So I could say strong name. And then how do we output the name? Well, we have that data. And let's just call name. Name is simply just the form name that we had. So we have our name, we have our email, and let's just have our message. And I'll just output that right on the body data message. All right, let's give that another run back to Chrome. I still have my post here, so I'm just going to hit refresh, hit continue, and that should send us another email and see if it comes in right here. There it is. Open it up and there we go. So we have, thank you for your message, name, new customer, new at email, testing mailables in Laravel. Great. The very last thing I just want to touch up on is in our controller. After we hit the store method, the nice thing to do is to display a thank you message of some sort. But for the purposes of demonstration, I'm just going to return or redirect and let's go back to our contact. That way we see the form again. So let's try that one final time, refresh, and we should be headed back to contact. And there we are. So it simply just returns back. Now we are not giving our users any feedback at all, which will bring us to our next episode where we're going to be talking about flashing data to our session so we can show things to our users, such as a thank you message for filling out the contact form. So stay tuned.